Okay, there are some tips for the analytical and computational methods exam. This is the practice paper they gave you. Have a look at these exercises. Uh, so in here you'll be asked to integrate a function using either algebraic substitution, integration by parts or partial fractions, and also do the integral using Simpson's rule, which is a numerical method. So I'll pick one of the questions to have a go at to guide you, and I've picked exercise 191, page 478, because in that um, question, that particular question, the solution using in an integration method is in the video clips. If you look at this particular integral, I hope you can see that this involves partial fractions. So have a look at that video for how to actually solve this definite integral using partial fractions. Um, but what I'm going to do in this little short clip is to use Simpson's rule, which is below here, to find out what the integral is using a numerical method. So the first thing we have to do in this particular method is divide it up into a number of intervals. And so we take our interval, we're going to find the interval width d, that equals the interval range, so this is 4 take away 3 in this particular case, divided by the number of intervals you want to separate it into. Uh, in the exam, you'll probably be given the number of intervals, but you can choose, so long as it's an even number. So I'm going to choose 4 to make the thing reasonably quick. Uh, so 4 take away 3 is 1, divided by 4. So my integral width, interval width is going to be 0 0.25. So I'm going to start at 0 point, uh, start at 3 rather, which is the upper limit, the bottom limit here, and work my way up to 4 in intervals of 0 0.25, and lay it out in a table. So if we look at this, this is the sort of table that I would recommend that you use, but it's up to you in a way. So I'm going to start at 3, and then I'm going to go up in intervals of 0 0.25 to the top limit. And then I'm going to check when I do that that I've got an odd number of ordinates. One, two, three, four, five ordinates. It must be an odd number. And if you divide by an even number when you're working at an interval width, you will end up with an odd number of interval uh, ordinates. So the first one is going to be the first ordinate. The last one is obviously the last ordinate. So second, third, and fourth ordinates are here. So then all we have to do is work out what the value for the function is. We substitute x equals 3 into the function that we were given in this particular question, which is here. And then we put in x equals 3.25 and work out the value of the function, and so on. And if we look at the Simpson's rule here, it tells us that the area is approximately given by one third times the interval width in this case is 0.25, times the sum of the first plus the last, plus four times the even ordinates, and two times the sum of the remaining odd ordinates. So if we look at our table, these are our even ordinates, the second and the fourth, so this value and this value, so I'll times them by four, and the remaining odd ordinate, in this case is only one of them, we don't count the first and last, in other words, we times by 2. So if you want to work that through, and you find the sum of all that lot, put that into the formula and see what you get. I'll, if you want to have a go, pause the video here, and I'll just run through the solution afterwards. So let's have a look at the solution in the table. So for each of the values, what I've done is I've, put, I've worked out what the value of the function is for x equals to 3 and x equals to 3.25 and so on. Here are the solutions. I've taken the even solutions and times by 4 to get this value and this value, and I've multiplied the remaining odd number by 2 to get this. And then I add them all together to get this, and then I plug it into the formula. So if we write down what the formula is, approximately given by a third times the interval width, which is 0 0.25, times the sum of all those values. We work that out and we get an area of about 0 0.627. And if you look at the text exercise, you'll see that by integrating it using partial fractions, we get around about the same answer. Okay, 
so I'll stop that there. But before I stop it, I'll just mention that um, reset practice paper, which is also on here, is something that you could look at. There's another example of using Simpson's rule on here. Obviously, there's marks of order for using the numerical method, and then further marks for actually going through the integral method and then commenting on the two solutions.